Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy 1 in verse 15. The Bible here says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am the worst. But for that very reason, I will show mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invincible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. And the church said, Amen. See, the scriptures here say, Jesus came to earth to show mankind who God really is. Jesus came to earth to teach the truth. Jesus came to earth to reveal God's love. He came to heal the sick. He came to offer salvation. He came to show us how to live. Jesus, he came to die. You know, here's the side of the Christmas story that we don't hear too often. Those little wrists that were created by the Holy Spirit in Mary's womb were made so that nails may be driven in them. Those baby feet, small and, and unable to walk, would one day be nailed to the cross for us. That little sweet infant's head with those beautiful eyes will someday be crowned with a crown of thorns. That little boy's body one day will be ripped open by a spear. Jesus was born to die so that we can live. And that's the song we sing. The title of my lesson here tonight is simply A True Christmas Carol. You're, you're probably wondering who's up here speaking tonight. Uh, my name is Olinka Olabade Oredola. And I know that was a mouthful, so you can just call me Ole for short, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm so excited to be in the Southland region, amen. Uh, my wife and I, we landed a week ago. Uh, I went there on Thursday night, and uh, it's been so exciting. I feel like we've been with, with you guys for over a year already. And it's awesome that tonight we have some of the disciples that came from San Francisco. A lot of them are already in San Francisco right now for Christmas. But uh, you saw Andre Sloan here singing the word, or singing uh, God's word over there, singing incredibly. Uh, we have uh, 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 Perla Douglas with us as well, uh, who is a, a Southland native all the way from Gardena right there, you know what I'm talking about? And then we have Alan Ramos with us as well. And uh, Ali Estrella is also with us, and uh, they'll be placing membership in the Southland region. And I've got to say, what, what an incredible service we've had so far, amen? Uh, let's get up one more time for the song service. Let me tell you, man, when I heard that Walter Whitaker was with us in the Southland, I was so fired up to hear Walter sing. You know, I, I told him, like, bro, you were one of my favorite songs. I watch you on YouTube. Now I can see you in person. All right. Amen. And uh, what an incredible welcome by the Franklins. Also have the Franklins with us as well. And the USC graduate and uh, incredible legend of, in the kingdom, uh, Brandon Willingham and Daniel Velasco did a great contribution. And I, I just got to say, I know Tyree and Jail are not here right now, but I just want to say thank you to them. Uh, they left us an incredible region to uh, work with and run with, and we're excited uh, to build family, and we're excited to worship with you guys and give God all the glory. And I, I hope and I'm sure most of us here are familiar with uh, the movie A Christmas Carol. Who, who here has seen it or heard about it? Okay, okay, good, very good. Uh, we know the main character, the protagonist, Ebenezer Scrooge. This guy was just angry all the time. You ever meet someone like that who's always angry? He was a rich man, but was not content. And one day the novella goes that a ghost comes to him and tells that he's gonna be visited by three other ghosts. One ghost was the ghost of Christmas past. The other one, the ghost of Christmas present, 
And the final one, the ghost of Christmas future. The past shows him how he became this very angry man. The present shows how sad he is. And the future shows the consequences if he doesn't change. And I thought, you know, in this, the way the novella goes is that the vision comes and the ghosts come on Christmas Eve. So I thought, what other can we talk about during Christmas Eve other than a true Christmas carol? And today we're not going to talk about some ghosts. Today we're going to talk about Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about Jesus of Christmas past, Jesus of Christmas present, and Jesus of Christmas future. You know, it's a communion today, you know what I'm saying? So we're, we're trying to keep it a little short today. So we're looking at just one passage. Let's go to Luke 5. You know, um, I'm a preacher who likes some encouragement, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, I, I'm a preacher who likes to get kind of preached back to, you know what I'm saying? So if something hits you or you're encouraged, you're inspired, just give me a little amen, you know. Uh, say, say hallelujah if you want to say hallelujah, you know. Give it a little come on, bro, you know what I'm saying. But uh, come on, brother's good too, amen. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter 5 and verse 12. Here we see a very inspiring story. Verse 12 says, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So the crowds of the people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Here we see a story of a man who had leprosy who was healed by Jesus Christ. You know, lepers were, were outcasts. So this man was risking his life to go into the city just to be healed by Jesus. And I believe throughout the whole Bible, leprosy is supposed to represent sin. It's an autoimmune disease that leads to disfigurement and deformities in the body. So leprosy is an inward disease just like sin is an inward disease. Leprosy is loathsome just like how sin is loathsome. Leprosy separates people from others, just like sin could break relationships. Leprosy could be felt, just like sin can be felt. It's a, it has a terrible odor. When someone's in sin, you could stink up a room a bit. And leprosy spreads fast, just like sin could spread fast. And it's so awesome to be here on a Christmas Eve to worship God. But right now, the picture that I believe God wants us all to have a deep conviction on, that outside these doors, all around the South Land, in our campuses, in our workplaces, in our schools, they are full of lepers, dying to their sin, dying to depression, dying to anxiety, dying to abusing drugs and sex and alcohol, and they need Jesus Christ. They need Jesus to come and say, I am willing to heal you. They need Jesus to come and say, yes, you can touch me and be healed from the leprosy. You know, I remember, if you guys didn't know from my name, um, uh, I'm Nigerian. But, you know, when Kip said that uh, nationals should go home, I'm, I'm from L.A. originally, so I, I, I answered that call to come home. You know what I'm talking about? Um, I, I've, been, I've been to Nigeria two times. And the first time I went, I was seven years old. I was so young. But something I never forgot. The first day I got there, <clears throat> I was in Lagos. And I was in a, a, a car. And I see a little girl come up to the window. And she had leprosy. Her fingers were gone. Her lips were disfigured. And, and when, when I saw her, I was, I just, I was so shocked. 
And I was taken aback to my shame. But you see, Jesus was quite different. When he saw the leper, he wasn't shocked and taken aback. He reached out his hand and touched him. You see, as one said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And, and let's just be honest. All of us are former lepers. All of us got our sin forgiven. And right here tonight in the Southland region, we're a family of lepers. And, and, and I'm here to lay down my life for you guys. I, I, I know I don't know all of your names. I don't, I, know, I don't know all of your stories. But it doesn't matter. When you said Jesus Lord and got cure of your leprosy, you became my brother. You became my sister. And now I'm going to lay down my life for you. But I also expect you to lay down your life for me. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Even as we study the Bible, people that are not disciples, they want to know, do you care about them? Do you care about the state of the world? Do you see that many people right now, sadly, are not having a Merry Christmas? And it's up to us to introduce them to Jesus. Then it goes on in this passage, and Jesus, after he heals the man, tells him, to go show yourself to the priest as a testimony and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded. So yes, I believe that the healing was the testimony, but I also believe there's something deeper that Jesus wanted the whole world to understand. So let's see in the Bible, what does the Old Testament prescribe for lepers to do after they're healed? Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 14. There you go. Got a hallelujah there for my wife. So it's encouraging. I have an encouraging wife. You know what I'm saying? Leviticus. Oh, yeah, there you go. Got one from, who's that? Who's that, Brandon? There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Leviticus 14. Let's see what the Old Testament prescribes. It says in verse 1, The Lord said to Moses, these are the regulations for any diseased person at the time of their ceremonial cleansing. When they are brought to the priest, the priest is to go outside the camp and examine them. If they have been healed of their defiling skin disease, the priest shall order that two live clean birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop be brought for the person to be cleansed. Then the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over fresh water in a clay pot. He's then to take the live bird and dip it together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times he shall sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the defiling disease and to pronounce them clean. After that, he used to release the live bird in the open fields. So it's an interesting passage. You know, Leviticus is kind of that book you sometimes skip over when you read the Bible chronologically. But it's an interesting passage here where it says that the priest, when they find someone who's now healed of leprosy, is to take two live birds. One bird he gets and just rips the bird's head off, pours it into a pot of water with different things in it, and then he takes the other live bird and dips it into the pot. And then that live bird is then to be set free. We have to understand the Old Testament is a physical foreshadowing of spiritual realities. Jesus wanted these people to know and wanted us to know that the foreshadow what he was going to do to save people. Jesus was that bird who was killed. He shed his blood for you so that we can be set free. When Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those were not empty words. We know from Isaiah 53 that sin separates us from God. So for a brief moment, the Trinity was broken for our sins, so we can be forgiven. And Jesus yells in agony on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he dies. But we know, and thank God, that he rose on the third day. So what does this to represent? That's what baptism is all about. Jesus shed his blood so that we can be baptized in it. When we get baptized, when someone gets baptized, they participate in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
They are that live bird that's now dipped into the blood of Jesus. And then that priest says, you are set free. Go, you're resurrected. You now have the Holy Spirit. And it was awesome. Last week, we saw Eric get baptized over here. And today, we're going to see TJ get baptized into Christ. These people are saying no more to leprosy, and they're going to be set free from their sins. Are you guys with me? Uh, I remember when I was cured of my leprosy. Uh, I, I, I grew up religious. I grew up in the church. Baptist, Pentecostal. Hallelujah, man. Uh, you know, in the womb, I was already in the church. You know what I'm saying? But I never knew the Bible. The American dream was my God. Prestige, respect, success, money, and I went after that. Got an engineering degree at UC Merced, got offered to be an intern at a gas and electricity company, and I got a piece of that dream, and I thought it was going to fulfill me. Got offers to work for NASA, got offers to work for the bar station, but it wasn't fulfilling. I saw the most money in my bank account I've ever seen in my life, I'm like, there has to be more, and I got so depressed. I got so depressed, I, I was borderline suicidal. Didn't try to commit suicide, but I thought, what's the point of living? And then one night I prayed to God, I was like, God, I, I need to meet someone that could teach me the Bible. Literally the next day, I met a disciple of Jesus. His name is Christian, you know, so he leads a Salt Lake City church now. And he invited me to church, and I started studying the Bible, then I came to that light and darkness study. And anyone who's done, if you're a disciple, you know about light and darkness. But I don't know what they were thinking when they did it with me. They, 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 we did it in the middle of an IHOP at the prime time hours. And, I, and, and they were getting open about their sin. And I was like, I don't want to do that. So this, there's a little child next to me. And there's like, so there's like a mom. Like, I can't, like, come on, man. Like, can we go to a private room? These guys need some training. But hey, man, it's OK. Um, but I knew I had to practice something for once in my life. And it's called rigorous authenticity. Rigorous is intense authenticity. Well, you know what that means. It means to be real. And for once in my life, I had to be intensely real. I didn't want to get open about the sin in my life. I didn't want to go about the addiction to pornography. I didn't want to get open about the depression. I didn't want to get open about all the detestable things I've done. But I knew all that was leading to my leprosy. And I wanted to be healed of my sin. So I got open. Got open about it, wrote my little sin list, confessed more. And then July 31st, 2016, at the GLC, I was baptized into Christ. You know, I, I just want to give the church three challenges and practices. Can, 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 I, can I challenge you here tonight? You guys ready for a challenge? When, when, when you preach from the pulpit, you got to challenge the church and inspire the church. Three practicals of the hearts to have a true Christmas carol. Number one, Jesus of the Christmas past. I want to challenge you. Get open about all this sin that you've not been open about. Get open about it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, new, it's a new year coming. It's a new day. Not just the sin, but the past hurt. Any past hurt. Get rid of it. I, I, I know we've been all through a lot. And you're like, man, another new leader. What, 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 what? We have to be open about everything that's happening from the past so we could see a great future. I want to encourage you to write a sin list so you can have a new, renewed spirit. And if you're, a, if you're a guest, I don't know, who's, I'm still learning people, so I don't know who's a guest or not. If you're a guest, I want to challenge you to be rigorously authentic for once in your life. Do you really think the, what the world is going after is working? It, it's, it's not working. It's leprosy. Make a decision to study the Bible. Make a decision that don't let the new year pass without getting your life right with God. Make a decision to say, hey, Jesus says he's willing. The, 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 the answer is always yes. The question is, are you willing to be healed? Make a decision to study the Bible and get baptized before the end of this year. And I, and I don't know who's, you know, uh, who, but if you're a fall away, make a decision to be restored back to God. You, you, you went back to leprosy? That's like being healed from leprosy and saying, I like the leprosy more. Let's get back to God.
It's the first practical. Man, I'm sweating hard over here. <laughs> Number two, Jesus of Christmas presents. I want to challenge all of us, inspire all of us, to make a gratitude list of all the things you're grateful for in 2022. And I really want to inspire you guys. Here's the thing. I, I, I'm giving my heart to everyone here without even knowing anybody. I, I want to inspire you guys. Give your heart quickly. Give your heart quickly in the present. Tomorrow's not promised. I know there's so many different leaders. Just give your heart quickly. God will bless that, that unity and watch God move in a great way. Number three, Jesus of Christmas future. Write down a goal list for 2023 and pray through it and watch God blow it out in next year. To, be, to begin to close here, I told you it's going to be very short tonight. You know, some of us this morning may be haunted by the wrong decisions of the past or tempted to be discouraged by your present situation. Instead of looking forward to the future, you have regrets and you're dreading 2023. But I'm here as a prophet to you that your future can be filled with life or your future could be filled with death. Your future could be filled with prosperity or your future could be filled with dread. Now, I don't know the intricate details of your particular future, but I do know who holds your future. God, the Alpha, the Omega. God, the God who was, the God who is, the God who is to come. God, the author and the perfecter of our faith. He has our future right here. And if you don't trust and obey God, you have an immaculate, colossal, amazing future for God. Are you guys with me? He holds our future in this book. Our fate is right here. Let's close down Revelation chapter 14. In the movie, A Christmas Carol, the final ghost resembles the Grim Reaper. If you know the Grim Reaper, you know, he has the hood. Thank you, my brother. He has the hood and that large sickle. But I want to put before you the true Grim Reaper is our Lord Jesus Christ. 14 of Revelation 14. So I looked, and there before was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came up out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who is sitting on the cloud, take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who has seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. The harvest is ripe for us to swing the sickle. One day, one night, we don't know when it will come. It could be tonight. Our Lord is going to come with that sickle. And an angel will yell in a loud voice, it's the final harvest. Reap. And he will swing that sickle. But before that final harvest, I know in 2023, mark these words, we will have a harvest in the marriage ministry. I know in 2023, we will have a harvest in the mature ministry, the mature wisdom, wisdom of maturity. What is the ministry over there? I'm wasting my words here. I know for sure in 2023, we will have a harvest in the singles ministry. I know in 2023, we will have a harvest in the campus ministry. And one day, when that grim reaper comes, our Lord Jesus, it will not be grim for us. Because we learned from Jesus of Christmas past. We were grateful for Jesus of Christmas present. And we're excited for Jesus of Christmas future. And to God be the glory.